I'd like to thank the organisers for their invitation to present today on what I believe is a very important topic and I hope that you all enjoy the different workshop presentations today. Projects that aim to create tools for machine translation between signed and spoken languages are often initiated, designed and led by hearing, often non-signing, researchers. In many cases, such projects do not seek cross-disciplinary co-creation with deaf researchers and often exclude the input of deaf end users or ask for their opinions at the end of the project, not allowing sufficient time to adjust their projects to the received possibly negative feedback. This leads to many frustrations in the deaf communities towards hearing researchers. However, deaf institutions can be key players in helping to guide responsible and ethical developments of sign language technologies. Take for example the World Federation for the Deaf and the World Association Sign Language Interpreters Policy Paper on best practice and recommended use cases for avatar technology. EUD is involved in two major machine translation projects that run from 2020 to 2023. These include Easier and Sign On. Both of these projects aim to develop applications to translate between signed and or spoken languages. These projects bring together many different partners in their consortia, connecting technology experts, sign language linguists, and institutions that represent the interests of deaf communities. EUD's main role is to ensure that the needs of deaf end users are represented within the development process and that the resulting products are well fit to the needs and desires of deaf communities. To do this, we are adopting co-creation strategies to 1. Identify use cases or circumstances in which these technologies would be used and equally important, where they should not be considered for use. 2. Identify the needs, expectations and experiences of deaf people when it comes to translation technology. And three, gather feedback from deaf people for the technologies under development. We do this at different stages of the project. At the start of the projects, our deaf EUD research team carries out focus groups with deaf end users to determine appropriate use cases for the apps and to assess needs, expectations and experiences of sign language machine translation. During the project, we carry out evaluations of the prototype apps and different translation components with deaf end users to get immediate feedback that can be incorporated into the development process. At the end of projects, we will conduct large-scale evaluations to assess the views of deaf end users on the final product. Expectations, needs, experiences are some of the themes that have emerged in focus groups. Our research with potential deaf end users have shown a strong tendency towards human live interpreters first as the preferred communication method between signed and spoken languages. The gap left by this could be filled by VRS and VRI services. Then the gap left by these can eventually be filled by sign language machine translation. It is important to keep in mind to always let the deaf end user decide what method of communication is best for them or the situation. Don't force people 
to use one specific method of communication, for example, avatar machine translation. There is an openness to using sign language technologies, but there are also very high expectations before it's deemed usable. The quality of the machine translation has to be good enough before deaf communities consider it potentially useful. Deaf people will not settle with mediocre signing. At the same time, there are also fears that governments and other hearing decision makers will decide that sign language machine translation is a cheaper alternative than human interpreting and deciding to invest in these technologies and divest in human interpreters, causing deaf communities to rely on technologies for accessibility, even when it's against our wishes. Here are some examples of appropriate and inappropriate use cases that have emerged from our focus groups. Machine translation should not be used to replace interpreters. Machine translation should not be used in medical, legal and educational settings. Machine translation can be used for small things that don't have any impact on life. For example, hospitality, ordering a coffee. EUD's inclusion in the project has led to many positive developments within and outside the consortium. Within the consortium, this has allowed cross-disciplinary exchanges that have been critical to address issues that present both intersecting technical and ethical challenges. For example, anonymity in video recordings. Outside the consortium, the inclusion of deaf-led organisations has led to more positive and receptive attitudes towards the projects among deaf end users who feel their needs are being represented. This could be described as community building. The involvement of EUD in these projects has already been highly successful, not only in centering deaf end users' experiences in the development process, but also in creating open discourse between technology experts and organisations representing the interest of deaf communities, leading towards a better mutual understanding of both the technical challenges and the expectations from the deaf communities regarding sign language technologies. Thank you for your attention and I look forward to answering any of your questions.